Hi, this is Judith Peterson. I'm your Law of Attraction Life Coach. And today I'm talking to the amazing Agnes Vivarelli. She's a YouTuber, a life coach, and an author. <laughs> Welcome, Agnes. Thank you, Judith. Thanks for having me. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy to finally talk to you. Yes, me too. It's great seeing you and so excited about talking to you today. So, and yes, let's dive in. I've been following you on YouTube, completely obsessed, love your meditations. You're actually one of my personal favorites. <laughs> <laughs> so I would love to hear from you where your law of attraction journey began. Oh, okay. Well, it was, oh, I think in the 90s. I think that's, I'm not really great at timelines, but <laughs> I was coming out of a relationship and my friend at the time gave me a book on Florence Scovel Shin. She wrote the book, The Game of Life and Your Word is Your Wand. And there was, she gave me this book that was three books in one. Mm -hmm. And I was reading that and I was, for the first time, understanding that the mind was really, really affecting what was going on in relationships. Oh, re actually, no. Rewind a bit further. Mm -hmm. I forgot. I got a tumor when I was in my twenties, my late twenties. Oh wow. My mum was into Louise Hay. So that was my first introduction was Louise Hay. So I cured myself of that tumor when I was in my, I think it was 28, 29 when I got that and I got rid of it. And because they wanted to operate and I said, no. So I got rid of that when I, I was in this. my late twenties. <laughs> and then I really didn't do much for a while. Yeah. <laughs> and then I ended up, um, yeah, then I got the book from Florence Scovel Shin from my friend years later when I was really struggling and my marriage was falling apart. I got that book and then she gave me the book, The Law and the Promise by Neville Goddard. And that's when I really, when I was reading those two books, I was really starting to understand the power of what we think and what we feel and what we believe impacts what we get. So I started working on affirmations, working on doing self love and working on myself. Cause Louise Hay was really big on self love. Yes. That's where I first heard about that. I don't think I understood the importance of it, even though I heard it and I heard her talk about it. I used it to cure myself of the tumor, but I don't think I really understood that self love was an ongoing thing and that it was really important mm -hmm. for everything not just health but for relationships and for money and for meaningful work and all of that so yeah so that's where it all came together and i used to read that neville goddard and florence scovel shin and i'd be electrified i just couldn't sleep because it was yeah. so amazing mm -hmm. and i would read those stories over and over and over and I would then dissect and break them down and then apply it to what I was going through. And, you know, my whole life slowly transformed. Amazing. So that's where it all began. Right. So, you know, learning all these things and, yeah. you know, getting a handle on all these tools, what made you take the next step, which was, you know, becoming a law of attraction teacher, mentor? Um, what, what was it that inspired you to start sharing this on, you know, next level basically well i actually did my my life coaching course because i knew it was a good thing to go through personally because you do a lot of your own self-reflecting and, and looking at where you're at in different areas and all of that so i did it partly for me and then i was thinking i'd love to be able to help people because at that point I had, I had been reading stuff since I was 29, but then I was in my forties and I was thinking, okay, I'm getting older. I'm because I was doing, um, at that point, uh, home styling and, mm -hmm. and styling for shops, like mm -hmm. big homeware stores. Yeah. So I was moving furniture around and that was fine when I was in my thirties, but as I was getting into my forties, I thought, 
I really don't want to be moving furniture around. I loved my job. It was really creative. I was in different shopping centers around Sydney. I really loved the creativity, but it was physically really demanding because it was like you were doing removalists every day. So I was getting really tired. My back was suffering. Mm -hmm. While I was doing that job, I did this course. It was one day a week, I think, and I was doing it online. So I thought, oh, maybe one day I could actually let go of this heavy physical work and work from home because I just so loved being at home. I wanted to be at home. I wanted to wake up without an alarm clock. I wanted to start at 10 or 11 in the morning because I'm a night owl. I don't like the mornings. And I thought maybe I could do this work because I really love it. I really love the subject of all of this. Neville in particular, Catherine Ponder, Joseph Murphy, Wallace Wattles, you know, Rhonda Byrne came much later, you know, when she wrote The Secret. Yeah. But I remember thinking, oh, I would so love to be able to work from home and talk about this stuff because I, w I have one friend that do does the law of attraction with me and we've been friends for 30 years and we still, you know, we still meditate together and we do, we do these awesome. three questions on the phone every, every day if we can. But you know, so awesome. we've read every book together. We've discussed the books and then, because in those days when we started, there was no use. YouTube. So we were <laughs> literally getting books and highlighting, which we still do. Um, but yeah, we do obviously share a lot of YouTubes together too. Mm -hmm. So it ended up that um, I was doing the course and I thought, okay, I'm going to see if I can. And back. Mm -hmm. So I was on, you know, like, like a sick leave and I was doing physio and I thought, well, you can't do physio all day. What am I going to do the rest of the day? So I was reading, learning, and then I was, you know, starting to do a little bit of YouTubing to give information because it was fun. Mm -hmm. And part of my course, I did another course and part of that course was doing YouTubes. Cool. So... I did like 90 YouTubes in 90 days and that's when it started to really move because I had a lot more obviously videos up. And in those days I didn't understand. I honestly didn't know what I was doing. I was just <laughs> giving information. That was it. And cause I, I was interested in it and that was it. I didn't realize it was <laughs> actually going to after about, well, I, I started. My, yeah. Yeah. It was just fun. Cause you know, I just, really love talking about this stuff I could, I'd do it for free because I really love it <laughs> but I was doing it to try and give people some relief and also I had manifested a certain amount of things so I was sharing my personal stories to start with and then I started reading some stories out of my books because I had written the first book in 2009 I started and then I finished it in 2014 because in those days when I first started, there was no Facebook. There was none of that. So you couldn't just put a post up and say, Hey people, can you send me some stories? You had to do it by word of mouth. So that's why the first book took so long was because <laughs> I was doing it all by word of mouth. Then social media came in Facebook, all that stuff. And the second book I wrote in a year because you could put a post up and ask people, you know, for stories. So uh, where was I going with this? <laughs> I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> How you became a law of attraction. Uh, where was I heading? I was going. <laughs> but I'm loving it. So yeah. Going. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I started doing the, I started doing the YouTube. <laughs> you know, I'm, you know, I'm now employing somebody to do, you know, all my YouTube descriptions. She was a viewer on my channel. She said, oh, if you ever okay. need any help you know, let me know. And there came a point. Yeah, there was a point where I needed help. So now she does my, you know, she fixes up all the messes that I made. Cause when I first did YouTube, I didn't know what I was doing. So there was like three or 400 YouTubes there that were not filled in properly, not done properly. You know, all the keywords were wrong. The descriptions were wrong. The, there wasn't any information about me in the bottom of, you know, no websites, no emails, nothing. So she's 
been working through now there's 800 YouTubes. She's having to go through that and that takes quite a long time. So she works for me doing that. And then I ended up doing a lot more meditations, as you know, and i one of the other viewers um, approached me about doing music. So she was doing music for me. So because music has a big copyright and royalty problem, you've got to make sure you don't screw that up with YouTube. So I'm, you know, got someone to do that. And then, you know, I've got someone now fixing, proofreading all my books because the books were all badly edited by the publisher. <laughs> so they, now there's three books, of, you know, mm -hmm. I've got to go back and fix all the problems that I didn't, you know, things I didn't do properly because I didn't know at the time. So that's now somebody's doing that and then someone's building a new website. So it's like now that the business is really doing well, you can sort of put people in to help yeah. and, I can then focus on what I love, which is doing YouTubes and giving information and then coaching one-on-one -on -one or coaching in groups or whatever, because I like, I like relaying information and I like the mechanics of making things simple for people. And yeah. I like not that, you know, that it's um, in new age language because new age language makes sense to us because we know that industry, mm -hmm. but a lot of people don't understand our jargon. You know, yeah. you, you've got to speak in, in English. In, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's too woo-woo. It's too hippie. It's too fuzzy around the edges. And I understand that because I used to watch YouTubes and go, what is that person talking about? I've watched 10 minutes and I don't, I don't feel any more knowledgeable than I did 10 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. So it was like, okay, I remember saying to myself, I want to make this clear in simple English with no jargon from our industry that it's simple language for anybody to understand so and I wanted to also write stories or share stories verbally where you say what the person wanted what was the desire what they did exactly using the law of attraction or Neville or Esther Hicks Abraham Hicks whatever Mm -hmm. And then when they actually manifested it, because I wanted to know, I personally wanted to know time frames when I was reading stories. Yeah. I liked knowing in Neville's Law and the Promise, this person did this for three weeks and then they got that result two months later. So I liked the time frame thing. So when I wrote my own books, I made sure that I put that in. You know, of course, it's going to be different for everybody, but it gives people a point how long someone did something for and how long it took them to get it it gives you a, a little benchmark. And I think that was, that was something that was important to me. So that's what I made sure I did when I wrote my own stories. So, so yeah, so there you go in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> nutshell. So a question about that, because uh, I'm not sure if yeah. a lot with people that are very new to law of attraction or people that are maybe like a little bit more advanced, but where do you feel that people struggle the most? Yeah. I think people struggle the most in thinking that the outside needs to be fixed. And, you know, I used to think that too. I need to fix this problem in my relationship or I need to just work out how to earn more money so I can pay my debts. Now I see that that's not the issue at all. Mm -hmm. The issue is an inside problem, which is the way you think then that causes a feeling and then you have beliefs about that subject. So <clears throat> it's like, you've got to come back to correcting and changing your set point. So if you have grown up poor, you're not going to have thoughts about wealth until you actually become conscious that your thoughts about being poor is not going to create you wealth. And the same with relationships. If you feel unloved, you cannot go and try and get more love from someone because they're going to run away. Your neediness is going to freak them out. Yeah. So love you repellent. <laughs> got to work on changing what you think. And it's Abraham. Abraham. Yeah, no, repellent. And Abraham Hicks says it so well that a thought, a belief's just a thought you keep thinking. So if you want to change a belief, you've got to change one thought at a time. And you've got to be conscious of what your thoughts are in the beginning that you need to change. So you've got to go, okay, I've been complaining about, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. Or he doesn't love me. He doesn't love me. He doesn't love me. I, he's stubborn. He won't contact me. He doesn't spend enough time with me. 
those are all your collection of thoughts about that person or about that subject of money. So you have to change what you're doing because the outside's just a photocopy. That's all it is. Just a reflection. So I think that's the thing that, yeah, I think that's where people really struggle. They think it's over. They think the problem's over there. Mm. Yet you're always, when there's a problem over there, you're always, you're always there. You show up there. So why are you there in the middle of that problem? Yeah. So you've got to go, okay, I've got to dismantle my side. I've got to dismantle my side. So I think, I think us answering your question, Judith, I think where people get the most caught, like caught up in the, in the thing that's not working is thinking I've got to try and fix the outside and mm -hmm. it's not the outside, it's the inside. And, you know, I couldn't pay off all my debt until I understood that I was in poverty in my head. I was really in poverty. I felt poor. I had poor dialogue. Oh, I never have enough money. Money's hard to get. Money goes to other people you know, those bastards over there, you know, the rich ones, whatever it was, mm -hmm. the thing was, I didn't understand that it, that was all coming out from me. And as a projection, people always go on and on about the law of attraction, the law of attraction, the law of attraction. The law of attraction is the secondary law. The law of projection is the first law mm -hmm. that's coming from you. You project, it gets photocopied, the law of attraction brings it back. So you've got to look at the law of projection. That's the yeah. law that, and the law of assumption, what you're assuming, what you're projecting, then the law of attraction brings it back in. Mm -hmm. That's why I think the law of attraction doesn't work for a lot of people because they're focused on that law of attraction, law of attraction, law of attraction. Yet you have to come back a few steps and look at the other two laws that I think propel and create what the law of attraction does and brings back to you. Those other two laws, projection and assumption, Assumption. And Neville talks a lot about the law of assumption, but the law of projection too is a big thing as to why the law of attraction brings back stuff to you. Mm -hmm. so, um, so there you go. After, <laughs> so after all these years of um, being a deliberate creator, because people say sometimes, you know, I, I use the law of attraction or I apply the law of attraction, but you know, you and I both know that this is deliberate creation. It's like, it's always at work. And we can be delivering yep. or not. Um, what is your yep. what is your favorite tool for you personally? In your you know your personal life. I think it's there's a few. I I see it like now. I've kind of distilled it down to four things, and the four things I always look at. It's like a four-legged four stool remembering everyone's you pushed out. So if something's going on on the outside, you go, okay, hang on. That's me pushed out. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. Then you correct it. You go, okay, what am I thinking? And, and f obviously then feeling and believing that I'm getting that. So then you rewind and you look at you. Second thing I think is Ho'oponopono. You use the Ho'oponopono mm. prayer to dissolve the parts of you that created that. That's not there because you, because it just happened to show up. It's there because you're a match to it vibrationally, as Esther would say, you are linked to it because you are in a state that is matching what that external experience. So you go, okay, everyone's you pushed out. Then you use the whole ponopono. That's the second leg of the stool. Third thing, self love. What do I mean by that? Cause people always say, what does that self love actually mean? Well, it means a few things. Firstly, you've got to lay the foundation with physical stuff as in, You've got to have enough sleep. You've got to drink enough water. You've got to exercise and you need to eat healthy, decent food. That's alive, not processed crap. Your body cannot run if you are not looking after it. The body needs certain things. Why is that important? Because if your body is not in a good state, your mind's not clear. I coach so many people that are exhausted. You cannot mm. manifest if you're exhausted. No. It's a very low vibe and it's a vibe when you're, when you're tired, you are cranky, you're angry, or you're, you're just in this low grade grumpiness. That's a very low negative vibe that doesn't attract things. So if you can at least set the tone for 
looking after your physical body as best you can. And then the next level is the mental phys the mental self-love, which is meditation and affirmations. So you do the self-love physically, then you do it mentally, then the mental affects the emotional. And then obviously it connects the, the meditation and the affirmations connects to the spiritual. So mm. you do that. So that's the next leg of the stool is the self-love. Then I think the final, a leg of the stool the fourth leg is living in the end you get out of thinking about problems you live from the solutions what does that mean is you try and capture the feeling or the state of what you want so if you're poor and you're in debt you try and capture the feeling of wealth now that sounds really easy but when you're feeling poor and you've never been wealthy how the hell do you do that well then you <laughs> hop into wealthy people would be free because they're free to do whatever they want whenever they want so you go okay when do i remember feeling free i remember feeling free when i walked on the beach the other day on my day off oh i felt free so you go back and you recapture that state of feeling free and you don't worry about feeling wealthy and you go in the back door yeah. so those i think are the four most important things you know i've done in 30 years, there's been so many techniques and there's, you know, the next shiny object technique, you know, and at the moment there's things like the two cup method and the five by 55. And, and I'm not saying those things aren't good, but every six months or every year, there's another couple of shiny objects in the law of attraction platform that people go, oh, let me try that. And that's fine because I think these things are stepping stones. But yeah. I think if you come back to doing the four things I've mentioned, you do those solidly and you learn them, you know, because there's also vision boards and scripting and whispering technique and rubbing out technique. And there's all these wonderful techniques. And if you choose to do one and you do it and you apply yourself, yes, you'll probably get a result. But if you haven't got self love underneath, I see a lot of people don't succeed with certain techniques because you're still doing it from a place of need longing. So that's why techniques don't work because you haven't, you haven't laid the good foundation mm -hmm. of the energy of you that needs to change for that to go out into the techniques to create. So techniques are good, but you've got to have that base foundation. first, mm -hmm. I think to I agree. really, get, yeah, it's like the turbo on a car. Self love <laughs> is the turbo. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, mm, good awesome. question, Judith. I like that one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, I really like the answer. And I think it's so interesting that you brought up self-love because it's actually something I was talking to uh, about today with a client because it was, you know, there was all these things like, oh, I've tried this and I tried that, but I was feeling it was, you know, lacking in the self-love department. And now you brought it up and I think, the foundation is incredibly important. So, and I think it's important not to just like yeah. go past that. Like you said, there's so many amazing techniques, but it's like self-love, self-care, um, you know, the success habits. And I'm happy yeah. you brought out good food as well, because I think to me personally, that's really, really important. And um, it's a fuel for our body. So um, yeah, yeah, very important. It so, is. Um, one more question <laughs> so um actually yeah yeah <laughs> so um i was wondering what's your your favorite personal deliberate creation story so something that you've been very deliberate about and have successfully manifested i think the the most Well, probably the biggest manifestation that took the most amount of focus and the most amount of work for me was getting to the point where I wanted to be with um, a person that I was friends with. I wanted to be with him. And I, I, so I, it was a relationship uh, manifestation, but the, there was so many other things things that had to occur for that to be possible which was i had to let go of being an employee and i had to become 
my own boss. I had to then earn six figures to be able to travel because I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have felt good leaving my mum in Australia by herself. So I knew I had to be able to come back and forth between England and Australia. So I had to then create six figures to do that. I had to let go of the belief that the people I worked for were the source of my supply of income because they paid me well at the time. Well, I thought that was a really good income at the time. And I remember thinking, King, how, whoever, who, who is ever going to give me that amount of money anywhere? Cause I still had limited thinking about, you know, at that time I was earning like $2,000 a week Australian. I remember thinking, Oh my God, that's so much money. And I was so like, you know, that's the best job I've ever had. And I was subcontracting to them, but I remember think I had this thing that that was the only place I could make that amount of money. So, but I knew I had to let go of someone paying me and that I was dependent on that person for income. I had to let go of, I can only go on holidays once a year or once every two years when I save money. I had to let go of, well, I had made a decision. I had to pay all my debt before I did all that. Mm -hmm. So I had to, to pay off all the debt. I think when I started paying off my debt, I had nearly $40,000 worth of debt. Mm -hmm. And then, so it was like all these things were dovetailed together, earning six figures, letting go of someone who was my income, believing I could travel as much as I wanted, believing I could work and travel wherever I was, believing that what I had to say was actually going to be of any use to anybody because I felt not good enough and not, mm -hmm. I just didn't think that what I was talking about was going to be of any, you know, you don't feel secure about your own knowledge when you start this stuff because you're still practicing it on yourself. So, and then thinking that I was lovable enough to be with the person I wanted to be with because I had a specific person in mind and I did know that Neville had manifested his specific wife. So I believe actually if he could do it, then it was possible for me, but to be with this specific person, all this other stuff had to happen so it was like I would, I would be laying on my bed imagining what I wanted, that I was traveling, that I was earning six figures, that I was free, that all my debt was paid off. And I set this, this um, I made this statement to myself. I now travel four times a year in 2016. This was 2015. And then I started laughing because I thought, how the hell is that going to happen for you? Mm -hmm. You know, like I was, I just didn't have any savings and like any time I got any savings and the car would break down or any time I got any savings, then I'd get a tax bill. Every time I got any savings, it's like any time I started to get a bit of money, zoop, I'd slide right back down. The, the It was like snakes and ladders, you know? Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, I have got some serious mental, emotional beliefs work to do to be able to pull this off. So I'd go go to bed, I'd lay on my bed and I would imagine, well, I'd imagine a piece of paper with a triangle on it. It was like, I, I visually, I visually drew it and then I would go lay on my bed and I would imagine it. So it was just a triangle. I had Sydney in one corner, London in one corner, South of France in one corner. And I just drew this little cartoon plane in black. So it meant like I was traveling between those three places. So I'd lay on my bed in imagination. I'd imagine that triangle. I'd imagine flying. And then every time I would see a plane, you know, fly past in real life, I'd look up and I'd go, oh, I love flying in planes. I love flying in planes. <laughs> so I'd say it to myself. And in Sydney, you, you see lots of planes in Sydney. So I just made it like really simple because mm -hmm. I remember thinking, how am I going to imagine this? Because I've got to imagine being in France and seeing my family then I got to imagine being in London seeing my partner and then I got to imagine being in Sydney being with my mum and my friends and it was just too many visual things mm -hmm. and it took way too long to imagine it so I made the cartoon drawing to keep it really simple really tight and really it was pinpointed focus because I could see that black triangle I just drew it with a black texture and then you know I could see those words in black on the white paper so it was really striking really simple 
simple, really easy to see. So I would just imagine that. And then I'd say to myself, I'm free, I'm free. As I was imagining this thing, I'd say, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. And I just released that feeling of feeling trapped and stuck and how's this going to happen? I just would go to bed and I'd imagine that again and I'd breathe in and I'd say, I surrender and I'd breathe out and I'd breathe in, I surrender and I let go and I'd breathe out. And then I would spend hours. Yeah, it was just so just doing that because I was so tense. You just get so tight with emotion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, You get really tense when you just, you so know what you want, but you can't. (laughs) Yeah. But that's exactly what helps us in that moment, right? It's like, well, we're kind of pushing and we're kind of pulling and we're kind of, you know, uh, interfering too much instead of letting it flow. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I, I would spend between, between an hour and two hours every night. I was living on my own. So I'd go to work. I'd come back, I'd shut the door. I'd just hop in the shower and wash the day off, put on mm-hmm. something comfortable. I'd lay on my bed. And for between an hour and two hours, I would just do, I am loved. I am wanted. I'm a priority. I'm important. That's I matter. Awesome. I'm secure. Because I was, I was feeling none of those things. None well, of those that's things. so awesome that you did that because you know people talk about it and they want it but to actually put into work I mean you know it sounds a little bit weird maybe but it's like really allow yourself to take that time and really allow yourself to yeah to move into that space I mean that's beautiful I really love that yeah yeah and it took I did it for about six months six six months I think about six six, eight months, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I did that pretty much every night. I didn't turn the TV on for six months. I just literally, I was in such anguish about (laughs) where I was at and (laughs) where I wanted to be. I thought, right, I am doing this every night. I will crack this if it kills me. I'm doing this. (laughs) That's so funny. And I did it. You know, that was talking about that's that was the best manifestation. So yeah, so now it's all I mean, now it's all history and it's you know, I have been traveling. I did make those four trips in that one year. And um amazing. And then it's been four trips every year since January. Yeah, it's been four trips, I think, every year since January twenty sixteen. That is awesome. I really love that. It's like I yeah. had a similar experience and I was just wondering, did you wake up one morning thinking like, where am I? Because, you know, like I said, I had a similar experience and at some point I got so into it that yeah. I woke up and I was like, I'm, I'm already here. Where am I? I actually got confused because I, you know, I was training my yeah. brain into my new reality. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's surreal. It is yeah surreal when it happens it's it's a weird moment when you realize oh my god this is hatching now and I'm actually you know when I did the first trip I thought wow I've done one out of the four trips fantastic and then I'd go I wonder if I can do the next one and I'd go home and then you know back to Sydney and then the next trip would happen and I thought wow I've done two out of four so each trip I got excited that I was ticking off yeah, and you four create more three momentum, out of four, and then the right? final one happened. I went, oh my god, I did. You do, you do, yeah. and you, you, you. It's like you're riding the wave. Of, yeah, yeah, it gets. I'm easier. in this one now. I can create the next one. Yeah, yeah. exactly, because you see it, it does. Like working, it and does. it's like, oh my god, I'm in a flow. You got this momentum going, and it just gets kind of easier, right? Yeah, <laughs> it does. Yeah, it does for sure. For so, sure. are you still together with this special person? Yes. Oh, yes. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's good. That's really cool. I love that story. Yeah. And relationships don't have to be hard, you know? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, Yeah, it's good. I mean, I I think, you know, I you can. Yeah, you can say relationships are easy. Changing that belief that relationships are hard. Relationships are easy. Relationships flow. We understand each other. Things work out. We get closer and closer. 
I love our connection, you know, right. and, and we take care of each other and we, yeah, you just went, and I'm not saying it's perfectly smooth sailing all the time. Cause I, you know, I lose my footing like everybody else, but you just go back to, okay, I've got to do my affirmations. I've got to do my meditation. I've got to look after myself. Self-love. Let me get back into balance emotionally. And then the relationship yeah. just takes care of itself. Back, self-love. Back, back to basics. Back to self-love. Back, back to basics. Awesome. Oh, my God. I, yeah. asked, I, yeah, I feel exactly. like running to my husband and kissing him. Like, mm, it's like. It's <laughs> 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 like, I'm like, oh, really? Oh, you're playing jazz. Oh, awesome. <laughs> yeah. oh, my gosh. I had so much fun. I really <laughs> love this. Uh, yeah. I, Relationships are easy. Relationships are easy. Yeah. Go home. Me too. Relationships are easy. (laughs) Oh my gosh, that is awesome. So I guess I really, really really thank you so much for your time. I had a blast. And um, yeah, I also want to thank you for all the beautiful content that you put out there. I absolutely love your videos. I am obsessed with your meditations. There's actually one in particular that had this beautiful combination of the right words and the right music so so happy that you're bringing your gift to the world and well thank you so much for coming on thank you thank you judith thank you it's been re- been really lovely it's just so nice to talk to another coach and you know it's just lovely to know that there's lots of us around the world trying to give people relief you know it's nice to connect with right. people that are in you your or doing your thing yeah it's good I'm just i'm just gonna stop the video for a second oh my god this was so much fun yeah and you know what's nice also for me um to see you do all these things and it's like it is possible you know because sometimes you get a little bit caught up in the technicalities like but how and when and yeah yeah and that's you know i also get sometimes a little bit a little bit stuck <laughs> um yeah of course we do um judith are you do you still want to record this or you were you trying to stop the recording 